Welcome to a fascinating journey into the 1956 classic film, Bigger Than Life. This gripping tale follows a man named Ed Avery, played by the talented James Mason, as he grapples with the unforeseen consequences of a miracle drug intended to save his life. No spoilers here, but get ready for a roller coaster of emotions from funny moments to shocking twists and heart-wrenching scenes. Have you ever wondered about lesser known facts or anecdotes surrounding this movie that might fascinate you? Stick around because we've got a bunch coming your way. Now, amidst the various roles in the film, which one was your favorite? The characters weave a narrative that's both compelling and thought-provoking. Share your thoughts in the comments below, we're curious to know. Before we dive in, we'd love to hear about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this cinematic gem. Drop your stories and memories in the comments, your input is priceless. Get ready for a cinematic exploration that goes beyond the surface, exploring the depths of bigger than life. And remember, we're here for the funny, shocking, and sad facts, so keep watching. What's your favorite role, and do you have any cherished memories or experiences related to this movie? Share them below, we can't wait to read your stories. Back in 1956, a remarkable film hit the screens, telling the gripping story of a man's struggle with addiction. It gained a lot of attention and was well liked for its boldness in addressing controversial topics. The movie made people talk about the dangers of substance abuse and the pressures to fit in. After its debut, the film inspired many other works like books and stage plays. It even spawned merchandise such as posters and soundtracks, all because people connected with its themes. Those themes still matter today, especially when we talk about mental health and what society expects from us. The impact of this movie continues to be felt in modern media and discussions about these important issues. It remains a crucial piece of cinema history, reminding us of the consequences of addiction. Cortisone, although not physically or psychologically addictive like opiates, can lead to severe symptoms upon sudden withdrawal, including potentially fatal adrenal crisis. Long-term users require a gradual tapering of the dose to allow the body's adrenal glands to resume cortisone production. James Mason, under a lucrative contract with 20th Century Fox, had the opportunity to produce and direct films besides acting. Despite appearing in several Fox movies, he directed only Bigger Than Life. His friend Nunnally Johnson, also under contract, advised him not to produce any films, a suggestion Mason ruefully acknowledged after the challenges of making this movie. During production, director Nicholas Ray engaged in a homosexual relationship with writer Gavin Lambert while continuing his usual relationships with women. In a scene from the movie, Ed writes a check for dresses, totaling $159.95, a sum that would translate to over $1,725 in today's currency. Writer Walter Newman recalled Nicholas Ray's peculiar way of speaking, often starting sentences mid-thought. James Mason not only starred in but also produced and contributed to the screenplay of the film, making it truly his own creation. James Mason expressed disappointment with the movie's lack of realism due to its cinemascope and color, which he likened to cheap magazine color. He also mentioned an unsuccessful attempt by Nicholas Ray to establish a mentor-like relationship. Mason, however, didn't feel suited for the role. In a 1947 Life magazine article, he revealed a preference for jazz over classical music and listed Spencer Tracy, Gene Gavin, Lena Horne, Carmen Miranda, and Veronica Lake as his favorite stars. He was considered for a role in the 1985 film Life Force, but lost out to Frank Finlay. When Dr. Norton tells Ed and Lou about their condition, he talks about polyarteritis nodosa, also known as Kussmaul-Meyer disease. This illness, named after two German doctors, causes inflammation in small to medium-sized arteries, creating small bulges along the vessels. It mainly affects the kidneys and other organs, reducing blood flow to these tissues. This movie is listed in the 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, compiled by Steven Schneider. This shows how it has left a lasting mark on cinema. Back when the movie came out, people commonly smoked in public places like stores, restaurants, offices, and even on airplanes. And that's the scoop on the medical condition and the movie's recognition. In the mid-1950s, the pharmaceutical landscape was dominated by concerns about cortisone, a drug hailed for its medical breakthroughs but plagued by side effects. Merck in the US and Glaxo in the UK, the primary manufacturers of cortisone, fretted over the potential repercussions of a film on public perception. The movie in question, directed by Nicholas Ray, delved into the story of a man named Ed grappling with the side effects of cortisone. However, advancements in formulations and a better understanding of the drug's uses had tempered the initial worries by the time the film hit theaters. 
Nicholas Ray aimed to spotlight the issue of doctors overprescribing medications, specifically focusing on the ubiquity of drug prescriptions. However, the producers balked at the idea, fearing the American Medical Association's reaction. Undeterred, Ray adapted his approach, portraying physicians in the film as if they were akin to gangsters attired in black suits. Meanwhile, the Mayo Clinic researchers, who had unraveled the medical applications of cortisone, achieved recognition with the 1950 Nobel Prize for Medicine. Their groundbreaking work laid the foundation for the drug's use, setting the stage for the events depicted in the film. In summary, Bigger Than Life, released in 1956, grapples with the complexities of cortisone's early days, its side effects, and the dynamics between physicians and patients. The film navigates the fine line between medical advancements and societal apprehensions, all against the backdrop of a pharmaceutical landscape in flux. The movie Bigger Than Life, known for its average shot length of 11 seconds, portrays Ed, a character who, after being released from the hospital, discusses Julius Caesar with his students. Notably, James Mason, who plays Ed, had previously appeared in Julius Caesar. Many viewers interpreted the film as an allegory of director Nicholas Ray's struggles with addiction, depression, and his views on family, as well as a reflection of the societal anxieties surrounding the American way of life in the 1950s, particularly concerning the nuclear threat. In 1956, a movie came out that grabbed people's attention, not just for its story, but for the interesting connections it had with other stuff. While they were filming this movie, something cool happened. Marilyn Monroe, who was working on another movie nearby, dropped by to say hi. The director, Nicholas Ray, who was friends with Monroe, wanted her to appear in a small part as a nurse in a hospital scene. But Monroe got too nervous, so they scrapped the idea, and she never showed up in the film. The movie's origins go back to an article called Ten Feet Tall, published in The New Yorker in 1955. It talked about a true story that happened in 1948 involving a teacher from Long Island, and it coincided with the time when a new drug called cortisone was becoming popular. The main actor, James Mason, had an interesting start in movies. He was supposed to make his first appearance in a film called The Private Life of Don Juan in 1934, but he got replaced after just four days because they thought he wasn't right for the role. These connections show how different things came together to make this movie special. Monroe's almost cameo, the true story the movie was based on, and Mason's rocky start in Hollywood all add to the movie's story. Looking behind the scenes, the movie was inspired by real events mixed with Hollywood's collaborations and changes. The stories of Monroe, Mason, and the article all mixed together in this movie, making it more than just something you watch, it's a piece of history. This film exemplifies the efficiency of the old Hollywood studio system. The decision to produce it came swiftly after James Mason read a 1955 article in The New Yorker. Shooting commenced in March, and the finished product hit cinemas by August of the same year. During this era, product placement wasn't as prevalent. Still, viewers can spot boxes of Lux soap flakes and surf detergent in the family's kitchen, both popular brands of the time. While only Cyril Hume and Richard Maybaum are officially credited for the screenplay, director Nicholas Ray and star producer James Mason significantly reworked it. They added the first 20 minutes of the film, depicting Ed Avery's daily life before hospitalization. Additional rewrites by Ray, Gavin Lambert, and Clifford Odditz continued throughout the shooting process. In one scene, Walter Matthau observes that James Mason looks bigger. This observation accurately reflects the effects of steroid-induced weight gain in the film. James Mason's character undergoes a transformation due to the use of steroids, leading to physical changes that catch Matthau's attention. This comment highlights the impact of the medication on Mason's appearance, emphasizing the theme of the film and its portrayal of the dangers associated with steroid use. It serves as a subtle yet significant moment in the narrative, shedding light on the character's struggles and the broader issues explored in the story. In a surprising turn of events, during the making of the movie, actor James Mason's wife, Pamela Mason, reportedly suffered a nervous breakdown due to the intense filming schedule and the emotional strain of witnessing her husband's character's descent into addiction and madness. This tragic incident sheds light on the toll that such productions can take on the personal lives of those involved. The film delves deep into the psyche of its protagonist, exploring themes of addiction, domestic strife, and societal pressure. Directed by Nicholas Ray, the narrative follows the downward spiral of a seemingly ordinary man whose addiction to a new wonder drug leads him to the brink of insanity. Bigger Than Life is notable for its stark portrayal of the dark side of the American dream, as well as its unflinching examination of the pressures of conformity and masculinity in 1950s society. 
The film's bold themes and uncompromising vision challenged the conventions of its time and continue to resonate with audiences today. It's a sobering reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition and the fragility of the human psyche. Bigger Than Life serves as a cautionary tale urging viewers to question the cost of success and the true nature of happiness.